What up, S and M Miss Squad, and welcome back, guys. Here's your boy Sean. And your girl. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, S and M Squad. How are you guys doing today? We hope you guys are absolutely amazing. Yes, guys. If not, let's turn it around right now with some good energy and some good content. All right. So, what do we have today? All right. Today we'll be reacting to Oprah Winfrey. This is why you never mess with God. Whoa. No. Okay, so this is a warning. Wow. All right. Please don't mess with the man of <laughs> Guys, before we get into it, please make sure you give this video a big fat thumbs up and also get inside the comment section and subscribe to the channel, guys. We appreciate it, all right? So let's go ahead and get into it. Good energy and good content. Let's see what we got. Warning, this video Warning. may trigger certain people. The panel has been discussing the spirituality and the forces of God, but I also believe that there are two forces that are here with us, that we do have our, our, our God that we can depend on, but there's also a power of darkness that we do need to be aware of. And, and that's you, where the choices begin. Do you begin. believe that, that you can choose between one or the other? Most most absolute definitely. Yeah. Now, yeah, now Marianne okay. uh, Williams says in her book, Return to Love, that we're always walking in the direction of one or the other. That all of your actions in life, either you're moving toward the darkness or you're moving toward the light. Right. She calls it fear and love. There's this wonderful book called Ishmael by Daniel Quinn, which talks, it, which, which is, anyway, it's a gorilla talking, but anyway. <laughs> uh, it talks about one of the points it brings out is one of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world that there are millions of ways to be then a human how do you being please God? And, and many ways no but many paths many to what you call God that and is her path crazy. might be something else and when she gets there she might call it the light but her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her, if it brings her to the same point that it brings you, it doesn't matter whether she called it God along the way or not. And I guess the danger that could be on that, I mean, it's, it sounds great on the onset, what? but if you really look at both sides, I there could be possibly be just one way. What, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? only one way. There is one way and only one way and there that is through Jesus. Jesus. There couldn't possibly be with because a million you of people. Wow, this is getting a little Woo. deep. Because it seems like they don't want to acknowledge God. They don't want to acknowledge the power of Jesus. What? That there is only one way. I wouldn't want to be sitting by them. <laughs> Woo. There isn't. There could possibly be. Because you say, you intellectualize it and say there isn't. If no. you don't believe that, you're all buying into the lie. But that makes you right. Do you think, do you think that if you, if you are somewhere on the planet, where are you some, if you're somewhere on the planet and you never hear the name of Jesus, you never hear the name of Jesus, but yet you live with a loving heart, you lived as Jesus would have had you to live, you lived for the same purpose that Jesus came to the planet to teach us all, but you are in some remote part of the earth and you never heard the name of Jesus. You cannot get to heaven, you think? And that is covered in the scriptures, too. People are talked about that. God knows the heart. Does God care about your heart or does God care about if you call his son Jesus? Well, you know... Oprah, God, Jesus cannot come back until that gospel is preached in the four corners of this earth. So, Whoa, you don't know, figure it out. Okay, okay, I can't get into a religious argument with you. It's not religion. Before I share with you this rare clip of wow. where Oprah Winfrey Oprah... Hold on, now, before we move on, um, that was deep right there. Because it seemed like Oprah was trying to defend... Against that, you know, it's God is, you know, someone on the other side of the world that didn't ever hear about God. They still got to acknowledge him no Before matter what. Before he comes back, Before each and every back. person will have heard about The him. teaching got to go out. The message got to go out. We are the people got to get the message out. So some way they're going to hear about him. And I think everyone in this lifetime have heard about Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, please, show me one person that didn't. Here we, here we go, guys. Here we go. Openly admits why she rejected her Christian upbringing. First, I've got to say this. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which 
we must be saved except the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Really, there are only three things that every human being in this world needs to know, and it's this. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, in and the life. life. Why is he the way? Because out of all of the religious leaders in this world, out of all the presidents and prime ministers, out of every single guru, out of everything that this world can spit out, there is only one who has lived a sinless life, and that is Christ alone. This is the creator of the universe we're talking about. This vast, huge God encased in skin, flesh, and bones. This is the one who was born of a virgin, came into this world in a little town called Bethlehem, not a palace in Rome, but was laid in a an animal trough. This is the one who spent his life working with stone and wood and yet never went against the grain of God's laws. This is the one who did not make friends with celebrities and sports stars, but ordinary people like you and me. This is the one who it was said the common people heard him gladly. Never a man spake like this man they said about him. This is the one who, oh yes, he was God. God incarnate, God so powerful and yet he had such a gentle side. It said that he looked on the crowd and had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He was the one who made time for the poor, the maimed, the lonely, the lame. He was the one who stood by his friend Lazarus' tomb and those two powerful words, Jesus wept. He was a God who had a soft, tender heart. This is the one who did not chase money or fame. No, yes. he made sure that for our sakes he became poor. This is the one who preached from a borrowed boat. He rode to Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey. He was even buried in a borrowed tomb. One day when he wanted to illustrate a point, he said, excuse me, could one of you lend me a coin? He couldn't just reach into his pocket and pull out a coin. He really was poor. He was the light of the world, but darkness tried to extinguish that light and put him on a cross, a cruel Roman cross. Woo! And yet the Bible tells us that in God's heart, before the foundation of the world, there was a lamb that was slain. And that spotless, sinless lamb was the Lord Jesus Christ. Because every single one of you who can hear my voice right now is a sinner. We're all backbiters, we're all gossips, we've all been envious and lied. There's no one now who can say they're pure. There is no one who seeks God on their own. There is no one who is holy. No, every single one of us can sing with Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. And all of us deserve condemnation, death and hell. And yet God in his love sent his only begotten son yes. to hang and die on a cross yes. so that you and I could be forgiven. And that is why no one can say that I can come to the Father on my own way. No one can say there are a million roads to heaven because there is one way to heaven. It is only Christ who paid the price for sin. It is only Christ who can offer reconciliation and forgiveness. It is only through him. And that's why you would be very wise to put your trust in the one who died on a cross, who was buried, who rose again on the third day, who right now is seated on high, ascended in heaven at the right hand of God, and one day is coming back to judge the living and the dead. What will you do with this message you've just heard? Will you reject the Lord Jesus Christ or will you make him Lord and realize he is the only way, the only way to heaven is through him? But people want to know why did Oprah reject her Christian upbringing? Well, just let me give you one piece of evidence before we go back to Oprah, and it's this. If you don't believe that Christianity is the truth, the life, when Jesus Christ gives a person his salvation, that truth, that life is imparted, it's given to them as a gift. So you'd expect to see honest, truthful Christians. So here's my evidence for you. I want you now to take $90, 90 pounds, and I want you to drop 30 pounds where you go on Friday night, to the pub that you go to on a Friday night. I want you to take another 30 pounds and drop it on the nightclub that you go to on a Saturday night. And then I want you to take the last 30 pounds and drop it where you go on a Sunday night. And then I'm gonna do the exact same experiment. I'm gonna drop my 30 pounds where I go on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. On Monday morning, who do you think is going to have the most money? Me or you? I think deep down you know that Christians are honest. And yes, you can say all you want that Christians are frauds, that Christians are hypocrites, but would you put your money where your mouth is? Would you rather lose a hundred pounds at a prayer meeting or a hundred pounds in a nightclub? That's my question mm. to you. Oprah Winfrey. I've really opened, it's really opened my eyes up to a new way of thinking, a new form of spirituality 
that doesn't always align with the teachings of Christian Christianity. So my question is to you, Oprah, how have you reconciled these spiritual teachings with your Christian beliefs? Uh, I've reconciled it because I was able to open my mind about the, um, the absolute indescribable hugeness of that which we call God. <laughs> Um, I took God out of the box because I grew up in the Baptist church and there were, you know, rules and, you know, belief sy systems and doctrine. And um, I happened to be um, sitting in church in my late 20s and I was going to this church where you had to get there at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning or you couldn't get a seat and a very uh, charismatic minister and everybody was just, you know, into the sermon. And uh, this great uh, minister was preaching about how great God was and how omniscient and omnipresent and God is everything. And then he said, and the Lord thy God is a jealous God. And I was, you know, caught up in the rapture of that moment until he said jealous. And something struck me. Just, and I was like, uh, I think about 27 or 28. I was thinking, God is all, God is omnipresent, God is all. And God's also jealous. Jealous. God is jealous of me. Um, hmm. And something about that didn't didn't feel right in my spirit because I believe that God is love and that God is in all things. And so that's when the the, the search for something more than doctrine uh, started to stir within me. Oprah, I know you're one of the most famous women in the world, and so I don't. Ex now, I know you're a little smarter than that. I, I think that, you know, I think that she's there are preachers choice. out here scaring God's people away because of the way they are using the message to receive monetary gain. So she's probably a victim of this because she's God is in all much. things. God is love she's right god is love yeah god is love but god wants us to love him and don't put nothing above him most definitely so if you like to most definitely. um watch movies or you like to uh go on trips or you like the you know um holidays and you just love it so much and that's what he get jealous of because you're supposed to love him like that abundantly and not other things material things and, 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 and stuff like that. Right. So he has blessed our lives and you know, most of so us I have a story it. where we could have died, you know. Exactly. Everything all, the odds were against us to live and God gave us another chance. Yes. Because Absolutely. you can't buy that. You, you know, that only those type of blessings only come from God. You so cannot. you know. Yeah. Here we go. We gotta expect this message will ever reach you. But if just the smallest chance in the Lord's grace it does, I've got to say this. God is not jealous of you. The Bible actually says, it, it tells us the truth of who you and I really are. The Bible refers to us as dust and ashes. At times it says we're worms. So why is this vast, immeasurable, mighty God why is he going to be jealous of dust and ashes, of worms like you and me? He's not. But when the scripture says, the Lord thy God is a jealous God, it means that Oprah, although we are dust and ashes, although we are nothing, God is jealous for our love. God wants us to bow the knee and worship yes. him. Not because he needs our worship. No, God is happy in himself. He is content at all times. But he wants us to worship him because he knows that nothing will satisfy the human soul more than him and in his goodness that's why Thank he created you, us so that we Thank might you, enjoy Lord. him and his wonder and his beauty and i'll tell you as a man who lived for himself for many years and then turned to christ i'll tell you there is nothing more satisfying than knowing and having a living intimate Amen. relationship with the almighty one 
of heaven. But hey now, whilst we're talking about jealousy, I can't help but think about that controversial video I made last year, which irritated, dare I say, angered a lot of people. If you were one of the people who was annoyed by this video, would you just go back and watch it again and make sure you don't miss the ending because I sort of give away the whole reason of what the video was about and I think you might have misunderstood me. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. I really would appreciate another chance, another opportunity to talk to you about the most important thing to me and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching and God bless you all. We thank Amen. you, sir, for that great message Amen. that the world needs to hear. He described it perfectly. Yes. God is not jealous. He can't be. In he a made sense us. of he has hate and envy. He created us. He wants us to love him because yes. he knows that we need him in order to live a fulfilled life of happiness and love yes. because he is the creator of those things. He's jealous Absolutely. in a sense that he wants us to win. He wants us to be our best. You know, we got 24 hours in a, in a, in a day. And um, a person can not speak of God the whole 24 hours. You know what I'm saying? And the way that, that God wanted, he want us to speak on his name when we wake up in the morning, before we get in the shower, before we eat. You know, at the end of the night, he want us to thank him. He want us to, you know, just because the tongue is powerful. And that word is powerful. And when you're speaking on his name and you're living through him and his word and everything that he believe in, you will be saved. You will be saved. I honestly believe that in my heart and my soul. Yes. God is real. The spirit of God is real. We done had situations where God stepped right in. And we, us both, we both knew that it was only God. It was no one else but God. You know, so. And we have been in a lot of situations where God stepped in and grabbed the wheel. When we didn't have any control. Yeah, God is a so, supernatural God. That's the God we're going to praise. I mean, he can yes. make things happen that are so unexplainable. Yes. You can't even explain and why. Like, you just how, know like, that wow. it was. How did that happen? And that's how you know if it was God. Because that's you can't you even know. explain it. How exactly. did this happen? It exactly. was only by the grace of God. Only so. by the grace of God and his power. I pray for Oprah. She's. She's not a bad woman. Like, she has helped so many people. But I think she had a bad experience. Well, I, in think, life. I think she got the word jealousy mixed up because, you know, like I said again, God is not jealous. Yes. Of her. I think her experience was bad. Yeah. And I think it turned her off. And there are a lot of people who are misguided, misled, and turned off by the book. The Bible because the Bible. of they're following the preacher and not God. Exactly. Yep. And following that is the man. They're following the what human the man being. Said, what the man said. Yes, and how he said it and how it made them feel. Following. You but know, you have your own Bible. Find that's the God guy. for yourself. And when there are two or more gathered in his name, you are having church. Amen. We should be out in the street preaching the gospel. That's what God did. He went to town to town to town. Yeah, not in a building and, you know, where, you know, you you can come or you don't come. To, you to have lie. to save his people. You have to preach the gospel to his people. That's what he His wants. people are outside of the building. Yep. It says in the Bible, God does not dwell in temples made of hands. Mm, amen. Yes, yes, yes. He is not a religious man. I think Oprah is a little confused. Yeah, I think she is too. But I know. think that she's a good person, you know? Just misguided. And just, I pray yeah, for her. She just misled. Yes, you know? I pray and for her. I just hope that she just find the truth and just know and just so yes. she feels God loves her. Spirit. God loves us all. People may not love her, but that doesn't matter. Yes. God loves Oprah. And God had her. And she can come back to the light. 
she oh, can so come back. Long. Yes. God has been in the midst. She didn't even really want to say God. She the way that she explained them, she said what we call God, like quote unquote. Wow. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even talk about a human like that. What we call human. Like that is it's scary, but I'm gonna pray for Sister that Oprah. That is sad to say. Yes. Because God has been blessing this woman. Yes. As we can see with our eyes, yes. people are jealous of her. She is highly favored. Yes. She is most definitely She's highly one of, favored. You know God's children. Yes, she is. So for her to even say those type of words, or and I those can type tell gestures, that things have happened in her life. And she is a good person. People don't really see. But the eyes don't lie. I can see fear in her eyes. But see, this is the thing that I don't understand because she got one of the biggest platforms in the world. So her message can get out even quicker and faster to, to, to the people opposed to, you know, YouTubers and stuff like that. But, um... You know, I believe that she got the platform. I'm praying for her. To pass on the word. And Sister to know. Oprah's going to come back. <laughs> She's going to come back. Jesus died for our sins. Yes. Because he knew we was going to sin. Yes. And he knew sin was upon the world. It was here already. It was on the earth. Yes. So yes. God sent his only forgotten, forgotten son down to die for our sins. Yes. Oprah has a lot of pain. She's been through a lot. Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna figure and out the truth. She's had a bad experience get to with the church. But wow. the church is outside. The church. The, the church, church is the church, outside. The church, the church. Mm, 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 mm. Teaching the people. Teaching the people. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. I love these type of videos right here. We need more guys. Go ahead and smash that like button. Give this video a big fat thumbs up and also get inside the comment section. Let us know what you think, guys. Alright? This is yes. some good content. Yes, it is. Some good content. All right, that's our time, guys. We signing off. Here's your boy, Sean. And your girl. Yes, yes, yes. Mel. Bam. All right, guys. Have an amazing Bye. day on a Y'all be safe. God bless. Peace.